Okay, in this video, I'm gonna go over how you can teach your dog to go to the bathroom in a specific part of your yard. Now, we have four dogs that live in this house. Hartley is the dog, uh, Harley, excuse me, is the dog we're gonna be working with. Um, and so when you were doing this, the first thing you need to do is make sure your dog's potty trained and has a command word. I just asked the guardians uh, a second ago, what's the command word? And the guardian went, potty, I guess? And that almost always to me means that the dog actually doesn't have a designated command word. It's just a word, uh, on the top that we're kind of come up with. So we need to create a classically conditioned response. So the way that I do it is when I take my dog out, when my dog is peeing or pooping, I have the same word for both. I say business is the word I like to use. So uh, as soon as uh, my dog Quest starts to pee, I say business, and you have to be careful how you say it. If he starts to pee and I say business, he's like, well, what are you doing? He stops peeing and comes over there, and that's when you have accents inside. Now these dogs are potty trained, but you still need to have the command word so you can direct the dog to do what you want. So the best way to do it is what I call pass a train. So every time the dog pees or poops and you're in the yard, you watch the dog pee, business, say it in normal tone of voice. And then when I'm training a dog, what I do is I say business when they start peeing or pooping, then I have a treat, and then when they get done peeing or pooping, then I would get, put the treat in their mouth and say the word business a second time. The first time associates the act of elimination with the command word, the second time associates the command word uh, with the reward, and eventually all three of those become synonymous, and then you say business, it goes like this, and you know, yes, they have to go. You say business, the dog goes like this, you know, they don't. Okay, so that usually ends up being too. Even though these dogs are potty training, I would rep that so that it's gonna be important for what we're doing here. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have the designated area to potty, and the guardian has already created this, so I'm coming in and just showing you the after the fact. So what we're gonna do is when we take our dogs out uh, to go in the bathroom, if it's an open yard like it is here, they can go anywhere they want, and they are. And so their mother will teach them typically to go as far away from the, the, where they sleep as possible. Um, normally, I would have, if I, you would have asked me before, I would have probably uh, recommended putting it over there where you have your garden, but I see why you're doing it here because of the shape. So that's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our dog out when at the time that it needs to go to the bathroom on a leash. Now, when does the dog need to go to the bathroom? Right after waking up, five minutes after eating, and 15 minutes after playtime are the times they're most likely to need to do so. Uh, now, I also like to take my dog out once an hour. For uh, point of fact, uh, liquids go through dogs in about 45 minutes. Solids are about eight hours for dogs. Just to track varies a little bit based on what they're eating and how active they are. So if I want to make sure that my dog is peeing, and that's the easiest way to do it, I would cheat. What I would do is I would float the dog's food. I would put in, the temperature of food is more important to dogs than the taste. So during, and I would probably just, you could do it with all the dogs, I guess, at the same time. Uh, let's say we're just doing it with, with just Harley. So I'd put warm food, warm water with Harley's food, swirl it around, maybe like a pint or two, and then look at the clock. And then uh, after uh, five minutes after eating, I would put him on the leash, take him outside, and do what I'm about to show you. If he does, and he has, like, I'm gonna stand there for up to five minutes. If he doesn't go within five minutes, I bring the dog back inside, I put it in the kennel, and I close the door, or you can keep the dog on a leash. We just don't want the dog to have an accident inside. These dogs are not gonna do it, so I guess you could just let him inside. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Corona season. So um, anyway, so basically when we go, uh, what we're gonna do is we take the dog outside and it has five minutes to go. If it doesn't, we bring it back inside. We close the door so it can't go outside. So we're limiting its access. The only way it can potty is when it's on leash and we're leading it straight to the area. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and transition. We're gonna see Harley here. We're gonna go ahead and walk over here and the camera's gonna come and stand right over where Harley was. So what we're just gonna do is you're gonna walk Harley out and go stand on the, wherever you wanna stand, you wanna stand on the gravel. So basically, I would uh, give him, that's a six foot lead, right? Yep. So he can pee anywhere on this grass. And if he does, we're going to say biz, as soon as he starts to eat, now once he has a command word, you can say business, and now you're kind of telling him what to do. We know he has to go because he drank all that water. And we keep on doing this, within 45 minutes, you know he's really going to need to pass that water. So by cheating and loading him up with a lot of water during a meal, on a Saturday or a day where we're off, we can really know that he's going to have to go and that way we should keep on repeating. But again, he has no more than five minutes outside each time. If he doesn't go in five minutes, he's distracted, it's not urgent enough to go. So basically what you do is for a week, you bring him out here and when he pees or poops, you say the word business and then when you get done, you pop that treat in his mouth and say the word business again. So the first week is just taking him out on a leash. The second week what we do is we bring him out here um, off leash but we walk over here. Now, all of the bowel movements should have been here for a week. That's why we're taking him on a leash. So we're getting him used to in a habit of going here. So what we do the second uh, uh, second week is we have the high value chain treat. Make sure he knows that you have it. Walk outside here with him, but be off leash and you walk over here. Now he's gonna sniff around and you can show him that you have a treat. And if you have the right treat, he's just gonna come over here. Now, if he potties anywhere outside, well, I'm thinking about this. 
usually I do this for potty training. This dog, these dogs are potty trained. If you're potty training your dog, it's never, if it's not, still not fully potty trained. If it goes anywhere in your yard, you give it one treat, say the command, because we want to establish peeing or pooping outside. But what you do is if he goes here on this zone, he gets what's called the jackpot. So I'm going to go over and I'll just go a little, I'm going to do a little mini jackpot. So let's say he just got done peeing or pooping. Hey, Harley. Business, 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 business. If he goes potties anywhere out here, he gets nothing. Now, if you're potty training your dog, you would give it one for here, but these dogs are potty trained. So now if I go here, and I might even use the, what I call the doggy crack, the Stevens uh, free dried beef liver, or warm chicken. So you want a super special, amazing reward. So there's an incentive. So I pee anywhere else, nothing happens. I pee here or poop here, I get the mother load of great treats. So for a week, every time he goes here, he gets those five treats. And if he does it there, you don't chastise him. There's nothing, no punishment. He just doesn't get that reward. After a while, but you're walking out. And when you do, make sure you walk out and you walk here. I would probably have you standing on the rocks. You can stand anywhere you want, but just in terms of, uh, and then if he, yeah, as soon as he pees or poops, but the key is bring him out the time that he's most likely to. Now, obviously we're not gonna get him to pee on, uh, on command because I just thought of him filming this about 10 minutes ago. Uh, but when the dog is loaded up, you're gonna know he needs to go. Now, another little trick you can do is sometimes you can uh, leave a, a piece of poop there. Um, they do smell where it comes from and sometimes that will attract them to want to come over. And sometimes the other dogs will come and want to mark over it. Marking and urinating are different, so I really want to do it more for a bowel movement than a marking. Uh, but in a pitch, they can get even them started on that. Um, so eventually the dog would just run over here and do its business. And after a week, uh, the second week after doing that for about a week, but I make sure you're walking out of, I know it's inconvenient, but this is the best time of the year to do this at. You don't want to try to do this in December. Um, after a while, the dog would just become habitually going over here and pottying because that's where I get the reward and nowhere else gets me a reward. Harley, this is Harley. And these are some tips and tricks on how you can teach your dog to go to potty in a specific part of your yard.